Monday night special video here, and uh, I tell you, it's it's a great winter pattern. You can't deny that. I mean, whether you got a foot or a couple inches in your backyard, just think about what's happened over the last week with all the different winter precipitation, and then compare that to the whole month of December and even the first part of January, and uh, it's really taken a turnaround. And I think it's a testament to the fact that a lot of the seasonal drivers, based on mainly the ocean temperatures, are now taking hold, and I think it's game on for the next couple of weeks uh, through the end of February. This is our winter. Um, it was late this year, but here we go again. And I want to talk today about this potential storm threat for Thursday and break down the differences in the models and also show you even in a longer period how things could get interesting. But this is the European model right here. And a few things I want you to, you, to, you to see here, guys. One, there's a little bit of a block here. So there's a slight negative NAO, which is good because, again, <clears throat> It helps slow the flow down a little bit, so when you have two different disturbances, like a southern disturbance and a northern disturbance, uh, you get the potential they can combine along the east coast. And um, as we move along in the period here, I now want to focus on uh, the differences between the European and the GFS mainly. Okay, So this is the European, and again, notice here there's two pieces of energy. I, I just want to use this map because I think it shows it the best for this setup on uh, Thursday. But you have the southern disturbance and the northern disturbance diving down. Uh, as we fast forward to, say, uh, early Thursday morning, you can see the, the model's trying to show you that these two dis disturbances could potentially become consolidated and combined uh, along the East Coast, and that would spawn a surface load just to the east. Now, if I go to the GFS, you can see here the GFS is a little more sheared out, okay? So basically what it's doing is um, it's jumping this front short wave, it's jumping it, and, and basically it's called it's the feedback error of the GFS model. So it, it, it speeds everything up a little bit too much, and what you end up with is a storm that's way offshore, okay? So this is a GFS model way offshore. Now, if I go to European here, okay, back to European, you can see that the European has a low-pressure system that basically forms right over here near New Jersey and explodes right back in the Gulf of Maine. Uh, the GFS does not say that. Now, why do I think that the GFS is wrong? Well, I took a look at the other models, too. Uh, mainly, I took a look at the NAM. I took a look at the Canadian. And obviously, I took a look at the GFS and compared it to European. And what I found was that it seems that every model is at least a little deeper than the GFS. So it goes basically GFS, Canadian, NAM, European. So this is the, Europe, this is the European. Uh, this is the Canadian. Okay. Or actually, I'll go, uh, let me go like this. So European. This is the NAM. Okay. Actually, it's going to be try to load the new one. But this is the old NAM. Okay. So again, it's a little flatter. Then we go to the Canadian. Then we go to the GFS, okay? So you can see the progression here, but I like the trend. I think the NAM and European are catching this the best. And I don't know how big of a storm it's going to be, but I do expect something to form um, along the eastern seaboard on Thursday, potentially just for New England and some light snow down here in New Jersey. But I do not think uh, the solution of the GFS is correct. If anything, we'll, we'll pull up the NAM again here, which looks most similar to European. You can see the NAM tries to develop that storm just off offshore and come into New England. So figure this is the storm track. Take this surface low, bring it a little more in. I don't know what's going to happen here, like I said, but again, I think someone up here is going to have very decent snowfall on Thursday. And then I can even show you the GFS on this as we get closer to the, uh, into the weekend, into early next week. Look at this. So by the time I get to Monday and Tuesday, this, the models are really trying to develop a big storm or a little bit of a cutoff system uh, to the south and have it basically blocked off by an area of high pressure to the north. So we'll see what happens there. It's an active pattern. It's going to snow again, guys. Um, I haven't even looked at the model runs. Model runs are coming in the next hour and a half. But I'm just telling you what I think based on what I looked at. I think the Europeans onto something here. Uh, you know, if you really want to be conservative, blend the European uh, with the uh, Canadian, and you still have an accumulating snow event for New England. So we'll zone in on this more tomorrow. But for now, I just want to break down what I'm looking at.